Hello everyone, I hope you are doing good and staying safe. Welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel and in today's session, we are going to learn about commit and rollback in SQL. As we all know, the most important aspect of a database is the ability to store and manipulate the data effectively in the database. Commit and rollback are two such keywords which are used in order to store and revert the process of data storage in SQL. So in this tutorial, let us try to understand about commit and rollback in detail and see how they are used. More on that soon, but before we get started, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest technologies and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us understand the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is commit in SQL and discuss why we use commit. And then we'll understand what is rollback in SQL and discuss why we use the rollback command in SQL. And then we'll have a detailed comparison between commit and rollback and see how they are different from each other. And finally, we'll execute both these commands in MySQL Workbench. So what is commit and rollback in SQL? Commit and rollback are the commonly used transaction control language commands or TCL commands used in SQL. These TCL commands or transaction control language commands are basically used for managing and controlling the transactions in a database to maintain consistency. And it also helps a user manage all the changes made by the DML commands for maintaining its transactions. TCL lets the statements get grouped into a logical transactions. Now to understand more about commit and rollback, it is important to understand what exactly are transactions. Now a transaction is basically a block of SQL query or set of SQL statements executed on the information and data stored in the database management system. So any transaction when made happens temporarily or permanently in database. Now a user needs TCL commands to make these changes permanent or temporary. For example, if you're creating a record or updating a record or even deleting a record from the table, then you're performing a transaction on that table. So it is important to control these transactions to ensure that the data integrity is maintained and it also handles the database errors effectively. So generally you will incorporate many SQL queries into a group and you will execute all of them together as a part of a transaction. Next, let us discuss about the commit command in SQL. The commit command in SQL is a transaction command that is used to save all the changes made by a particular transaction in RDBMS since the last commit or rollback command is used. It signifies the end of a successful transaction in an SQL database. Now generally the commit command is used after a data manipulation language or DML operations like insert, delete and update transactions. Now when you perform a DML operation without a commit statement, the changes are only visible to you. Now you can use a select statement and check the updated records from this modified data. But once you use a commit command after a transaction, the changes in the table or database are visible to other database users as well. Now another thing to keep in mind is that the database cannot be restored to its previous state once the commit command is executed. All the transaction commands obeys the basic principles of asset properties in SQL and the syntax for commit in SQL is followed as you the syntax is basically the is uses just one keyword that is commit and you can use this commit uh, using various DML operators like insert update delete statements as well. Now let us say for example I have an employee table and from that I want to delete an employee a record whose ID is 110. Now when I perform this query, it will delete the employee ID 110. And then if I perform a commit operation, then it will permanently save that transaction. That is, it will completely delete the record from the table. Next, let us discuss about the rollback in SQL. The rollback in SQL is a command that is used to revert changes performed by a transaction. Now, whenever a rollback command is used, it reverts all the changes since the last commit or rollback that we have made in our SQL table. The syntax is similar to that. It is includes just one keyword that is rollback and it is similarly used with the insert update delete statement. And let's say for example, I am deleting a record whose ID is 105 and for some reasons, if I want that 
got back in my table, then I'll use the rollback command here, which will restore the uh, deleted record that is the the ID of the employee who's having as 105. So it will revert back the changes that were made in the database by bringing back the original state. Let us now understand some differences between commit and rollback. The commit is used to save the changes permanently in the database, whereas the rollback is used to undo the changes and restore its previous states. The commit statement is basically used after an intended transaction which has been successfully completed. That is, if you're performing any SQL operations or transaction in SQL, and if you're sure that if there is no changes to be made for that transaction, only then you have to use the commit statement. Whereas a rollback statement is used after a transaction is unsuccessful due to uh, any circumstances like system failure, etc. After executing commit command, any transaction can't be used for rollback, which we've discussed earlier. And on the other hand, after executing the rollback command, a transaction can be still modified and sent for commit again. So now that we've understood what commit and rollback are, let us jump into MySQL Workbench for execution part. As you can see, MySQL Workbench has started and now by default, MySQL automatically commits the changes permanently to the database. So in order to force MySQL not to commit changes automatically, we use a following statement here, which is followed as set auto commit to zero. So let me just display this. Uh, okay. It is successfully executed. Now, what this basically does is it will not commit any changes permanently that were done prior to the database earlier or else you can click on edit option here and choose preferences and in preferences you'll find SQL execution under the SQL editor section. So you'll find an option which says new connections use auto commit mode. So if you find a tick here in this checkbox, make sure you untick before you proceed to uh, commit and rollback commands. So click on OK so that you are good to go now. So let me just consider uh, an, a table here to perform the commit and rollback commands here. So for that, I'm taking the employee one table as a reference. So let me just display the records from that table and I'll use the select statement for that. Select star from employee one. So let me execute this statement. So in our employee one, we have various columns such as employee ID, employee name, age designation, city, total salary, date of joining and department ID. Now to commit the current transaction and make its changes permanent, we use the commit statement, right? So I'll use the commit command here and I'll execute this. So now basically what this does is uh, it will permanently or uh, save the changes that were done prior to this database that is database table that is the employee one table. So let me just display the values now. So now let us perform some transactions on this table. So as we discussed earlier, we can use any DML operators like insert, update or delete to perform operations using the commit and rollback command. So I'm going to use the update uh, command here. So I'm basically updating the salary of an employee. Uh, let's say Sanjana whose employee ID is 1013 whose total salary is 30,000. Now I want to update that salary as 35,000. So for that, I'm using the update statement update the table name that is employee one set total salary as 35,000 where employee ID equals to 1030 right so let us execute this statement so as you can see one row has been affected and our query has been executed successfully let me just display the records again so as you can see, uh, employee Sanjana, whose employee ID is 1013, her sal a total salary has been changed to 35,000, which was earlier 30,000. Now, let's say in future, I have this requirement where I want to have the original salary, salary or the previous salary. Now for that, I can use the rollback here. So when I execute the rollback, statement here and select this table again, The total salary has been changed to 30,000 again. So basically we have done a transaction where we have updated the total salary of the employee Sanjana 
to 35,000. And after that, we are again rolling back to its previous state, that is again to 30,000. Now, similarly, you can perform uh, another transaction, let's say using the delete operation. Now, I want to delete all the records from this employee one table whose designation is, let's say, business analyst. Now, we have a total of business analyst uh, one, two, three, right? We have total three records. So, we'll be deleting all these records from the table. So, delete from employee one where designation equals to business analyst right so let me just execute this statement okay sorry the column name has been written wrong so that is why it is showing me as error so as you can see our query has been successfully executed and it shows three rows are affected that means all the records of the employees whose designation is business analyst have been deleted see as you can clearly see there are no records of business analyst records right so again i have this requirement where i want to get back the results or the records of the employees who are working as business analyst from this employee one table so for that i can simply use the rollback here so we'll simultaneously perform two uh, transaction here firstly we'll update this table again and then we'll delete which was already done so now let me just roll back this statement again so when i roll back this statement and uh, display the records from the table as you can clearly see the employee sanjana whose employee id is 1013 her salary which we have uh, set as 35,000 has been reverted back to 30,000 to its previous or original state and uh, similarly we have deleted uh, the records of employees whose designation is business analyst and similarly their records also have been reverted back. So in this way you can use the uh, rollback command to get back to the current transaction and cancel it changes. Now let us take another scenario here. Now what if I perform a transaction before the commit command? So for that I'll take another, another example where I'll update the age of an employee. Uh, let's say Rahul is employed is 1013 and his age is 26. I want to change it to 27. So I'll use another update statement here. Update employee one table set age equals to 27 so his previous age was 26 now i'm changing it to 27 where employee id is uh, 1011 All right so let me just execute the statement so it is successfully executed and we'll select the records so as you can see rahul's age has been changed to 27 from 26 now let's say if i commit this uh transaction all right so i'll just commit this transaction so basically you cannot make any further changes uh, to this record since we have committed uh, the transaction already so i'll perform the uh, two transactions again here which is basically updating the employee's total salary to 35000 and deleting all the records of employees whose designation is business analyst so let me just uh, execute this so as you can clearly see all our uh, SQL queries has been successfully executed. So let me just display the table here now. So as you can clearly see that we uh, the employee Sanjana who is having one uh, employee ideas 1013 her salary has been changed to 35,000 and we also have uh, no records of those employees whose designation is business analyst and similarly the first transaction which we have done which is updating the salary of uh, employee Rahul whose ID is 1011 to 27. Now let's say if I want to roll back this trans all these transactions. So let me just roll back here and we'll see what happens. So our rollback has been successfully executed and let me just display the records again. Now all the changes done past the last commit will be reverted if we roll back a transaction since we have uh, performed two operations or transactions after commit statement which is basically updating uh, the employee salary to 35,000 and delete 
the records of employees whose designation is business analyst. Now clearly we can see that their records have been reverted back to their original state. So, so like we have this employee named Sanjana whose salary was 30,000 which is we have changed to 35,000 and since we have rolled back again to its previous state it is 30,000 and similarly we, all, we have all the records of the business analyst as well. But if you look at here we have changed the uh, employee's age here like we have taken Rahul's age as 27 which was earlier 26 and we have changed that to 27. But even after rolling back this, we haven't uh, got the original record that is his age as 26. That's because we have already committed this transaction. So it will basically uh, not revert back to its previous state. So once the commit statement has executed the modification made by the transaction, it cannot be rolled back again. However, once the rollback statement is executed, the database reaches its previous state. So that brings us to the end of today's session guys. Now that was all about the commit and rollback uh, commands in SQL. So basically to ensure that the changes made by the transactions are permanently saved in the database, we use the commit after the transaction successful completion. In case the transaction faces any error while execution, then to undo or revert the changes done by the transaction, a rollback command is used. Now you might uh, get a doubt that where we have to use this and where this is applicable. Now if you are an SQL developer or even a beginner who is working on a database, let's say you are working on a database which has thousands of records and you are modifying let's say a uh, hundred records in that. Now due to some errors you want to revert back all the changes that you have made right. So for that you will basically use the rollback function for that. So in this way it will be helpful uh, for getting the records again back to its original state. So I hope you've understood how to use the commit and the rollback commands here. Thanks for watching the video guys. I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful. If you have any further queries regarding any of the topics that were covered in today's session, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at earliest. Until next time, stay safe and keep coding.